the I am that I am. Just take a song of praise and begin to worship him. He is worthy of our praise. Somebody take a song of praise. Your testimony will come. Oh, can you forget what you are going through right now and praise my God? Just worship Him. It's worthy to be praised. He's the great I am. Who is like this God? There is none like Him. It's worthy. Oh, hallelujah. Rama Rosha Tarea. Le Napu Shatinda Nadu Moshe Tarea. Eh, ma paru Shebarea. Worship him. You are wonderful. So wonderful. In your way. You are wonderful, so wonderful in your way. You are glorious, so glorious in your way. You are glorious. Oh 
sing. You are powerful, so powerful in my life. Do I have a witness in the house? Oh, yeah. You are powerful. worship. Tell him he's powerful and he will show himself powerful in your life. I want us to close our eyes right now. He's a powerful God. You see, when is your time? He will show his power. No power can stop you. I'm prophesying it through your life. The power of God will disgrace your enemies today. Powerful Lord, you are powerful, Saint Paul. So powerful in your way, Lord, you are powerful. You are powerful, so powerful, so powerful in your way. Oh, let's sing Yahweh. Yahweh.
Joa Gloria, so glorious in your way. Somebody sing your Gloria. So sing you are glorious. Let's go. You are glorious. Oh. So glorious in your way. Oh, I shall die in glory. You are glorious. Yeah. So glorious oh. in your way. Yahweh. Yeah. Yeah. Come to the front. Anybody sick? Aha. The angels of healing, they are here.
so powerful in your way. Can I have a witness in the house? Let's go. So powerful, so powerful in your way. Somebody say you are powerful. You are powerful. of you here, make sure you come back to testify. You are healed. Let's have a seat. Let's have a seat quickly. Please still be on the keyboard now. It's a glorious day today. If you know you serve a powerful God, shout hallelujah. There's somebody hearing me. You had a dream. 
and in that dream, you saw a creature with horn attack you. The Lord said, I shall tell you that that attack has just been neutralized. Quickly, I want to go into prayer. Three prayer points. And we go into the message of today. We're still using that weapon the Lord gave us, prophecy. And I want you to look at a, a very popular battle in the scripture. I want to just teach you how prophecy solved that problem. First Samuel 17, verse 43. Please, ushers, close the children's church door very well and bring down the earth. Yeah. First Samuel 17, verse 43. This is a strange creature that came. And what did the creature came to do? To terrorize the children of Israel. I pray that every Goliath terrorizing your life will be disgraced in the name of Jesus. If you read, because of our time, we will not read from the beginning. He said, when he came out and spoke some words, he said, the men in the army were afraid. They were what? Afraid. You know, sometimes when the devil brings those words, you are afraid. That was the same thing. Words. The power of words. Goliath has not started fighting. But he understood the power that lies where in the tongue. That was why Goliath opened his mouth. And started dishing out things. And he said, the men were afraid. But there came on board to the battle. A man that understood the power of what? Prophecy. Spoken word that can transform lives. We are going through some prayers, prophetic prayers now. And there will be deliverance today in the name of Jesus. That verse 43, please go back to that verse 43. Go back there. He said, And the Philistines said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with what times? And the Philistine calls David by his God. The same way he first cursed the other men, they were afraid. For 44, let's look at David. Did David run away? And the Philistines said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the hair, and to the beast of the field. You manly speaking, when you look at the height of Goliath, and you look at uh, the stature of David, you think this is possible. I don't know what the sense that you think the devil is putting on your head. But with God, every word that has made you cry, I order such word to be cancelled in the name of Jesus. This word is supposed to terrorize David. But look at 45. Go to verse 45. He said, then said David to the word, to the Philistine. I want you to use this word today. He said, thou comest to me with a soul. Some of us, they come to us in the dream. Huh? Some of us, they come in form of failure. He said, and with spare, and with a shield. But I come to thee, what? In the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast what? Defy. 46. We are going close. This day. Somebody said this day. The time of prophecy has come. You see, the battle was not won by that stone. It was won by these words. So some of you, you are looking at it. Those words that you will say today will deliver your Goliath into your hands. Some of us have wondered that how will this situation change. Your words. He said, this day, can somebody say this day will 
the Lord deliver thee into my hands. Look at the stature. Humanly speaking, is it possible? For by the power of prophecy, it came to pass. He said, and I will smite thee. Did David smite him? Yes. And take thy head from thee. Let me prophesy. Every Goliath that has been terrorizing you, God will take your head from there. In the name of Jesus, it is not my sword, it is not my shield, it is not my strength, but my prophecy. Your God will deliver your enemies into your hands. In the name of Jesus, somebody say, Pastor, I believe. Yes, it was that word. And he went on to say, I will give the carcass of the host of Philistine this day unto fowls of the earth and to the wild beast of the earth that all heads may know that there is what? Can somebody close your eyes? Close your eyes there and say this, that, oh Lord, so that the world will know I serve the living God. Disgrace my enemies today. Can somebody say that to God? Just talk to God. Yes, disgrace my enemy. Disgrace. 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 Ha ha. Disgrace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's go to verse 47 before we start praying. I want us to pray. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and what? Spare. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. Is that not prophecy? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, prophesy, and your enemy will be disgraced. I know your neighbor needs that. That your neighbor has been crying all the time. Say, neighbor, prophesy, and your enemies will be disgraced. Let's rise up on our feet right now. We are going to three powerful prayer points right now. Hey, I want you to really pray. Let Paru Shatadia. Eh, you are powerful, so powerful in your way. Somebody, if you know you serve the powerful God, sing it. You are powerful. That's 
scripture made us realize he said the Philistine caused David but you cannot cause those whom God has blessed Jesus told us about the strong man he said for us to get what belongs to us we must deal with the strong man Goliath is a strong man and the first prayer we are going to pray we have three prayer you will say this loud and clear every cause they said he cursed David with his gods. There are people that the reason why things are not working is that there is a curse that a God is enforcing. But today, Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the Lord. Can everybody share that? Every curse place on me by evil men and women. Amen. Do you understand? Curse placed on you by evil men and what? Evil women. Prophesy. What? Break. You know, some people say, ah, I don't have any. Women. Some of you, you don't even have an encounter with them. Is your mother that they are envy? They're jealous, your mom. They're jealous what is going on. They say, aha. All your children is cursed. But today, Christ has redeemed you from what? The curse. I don't know that curse that is not allowing you to testify. I don't know that curse that is not allowing you to comfort. But everybody under the sound of my voice, say it loud and clear. Every curse, please upon me, my strong man. Strong woman, I prophesy. Break. Open your mouth. Ah ha! I like the way somebody is prophesying. Somebody say, "Ya la la bush." Yes. Let the ketchup get in my bush. Hey, ye manush, malita bush, let the ketchup get in Aha! 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 Every cause that every strong man, every strong woman has placed upon you, let the cause be broken, 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 be broken. Somebody say where Shandakatadesh because. Place upon your children. Aha! Ye ne maru shatanes. Eh! Eh! Aha! In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say it again, I prophesy. Can I hear you with fire? Every curse upon my life. Break! <laughs> yes, I'm seeing change broken. Every cause that has to do with the family, every cause that is not making you to be celebrated. I need somebody to stand up like a prophet right now. And I want you to say, I prophesy. Can somebody say with fire again? I prophesy. Every curse I give up on my life. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Follow this prophetic one. Just repeat after me. Just repeat. Somebody's blessing will be released today. They cannot hold you down. Anyone here that your children is under a curse, I order that curse of a broker. Anyone here that your family is under a spell of you will not make it, I order that spell to expire. Can somebody say it again? I prophesy. It works for David, it will work for you. Can you say it? I prophesy. Every curse upon my life. Pray 
in the name of Jesus, pray. In the name of Jesus, pray. In the name of Jesus, hey. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The cause has been broken. Hey, hey, hey. Somebody sing. Yahweh. 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 Oh, yeah. You are glorious. So powerful. Powerful, Lord, you are powerful. You are powerful. Hey. So powerful in your way. Oh, you are powerful. You are powerful. powerful. So powerful in your way. Oh, let's sing taught us about the strong man and he said if you want to experience the season of blessing you must deal with your strong man tell your neighbor neighbor prophesy against your strong man today so if you go to a church where there is no spiritual warfare they are deceiving you and you might wonder that ah, but their own life you don't understand their own foundation the bible says if the foundation be destroyed you can't compare your own foundation to the foundation of somebody that their great-grandfather started Christianity in a place where darkness is. There is grace transferred to them. But what can you say of your own great-grandfather? Some of us, the great-grandfather that you even think is a reverend belongs to Oboni. Mixing the two together. Do you understand what I'm saying right now? So what fear is very, very important. He said, it teaches our fingers to walk, to walk. Don't be tired. Everybody here, share this loud and clear. Every strong man. I need somebody to say with fire, let's go. Every strong woman. Terrorizing my life. Goliath was a terror. Terrorizing. Can I hear that terrorizing my life? Let's go. You will now use David's prophetic weapon. I come against you in the name of the Lord. I'm not hearing prophets in the house. Can I hear the prophets in the house? Where are the prophetess in the house? Can I hear you? Release me! Die! Amen. Do you understand right now? Use that weapon. It is what God gave us. And you will enter into your season. Who is that power you are seeing all the time? That is even mocking your prayers. It's time right now to rise up. Can I hear you like a prophet right now? Every strong man! Can I hear somebody say it louder? Every strong woman terrorizing my life. I come against you in the name of the Lord. Release me. Die. 
This is mountain of fire miracle ministers. Make sure you are praying. Ah, ah. I come against you in the name of the Lord. I don't want to see you in my dream again. Ah, yeah, le, 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 ba, ba, I come against you in the name of the Lord. Hey, Baru Satania. Somebody say it's confront your Goliath. Confront the strong man. I come against you in the name of the Lord. Release me. Somebody say, Release me. Da! Release me. Da! Yene Babosh, Atari Babosh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yene Babosh, Ode. Yene Babosh, Atari. Yene Babosh. Hey, hey, hey. Somebody make sure you are praying this prayer. Ha ha. I come against you in the name of the Lord. Somebody say it. Rua, rua, rua. I come against you in the name of the Lord. Barua, shadane, no bush. Hey, 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 hey. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Beautiful gift has been released to people here. Now. Yes, 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 yes. He said, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace? Everything about you will speak beauty now. Please let us make sure we do this. This is the uh, last prayer before we sit down right now. I want everybody here to say this loud and clear. You know I've told you what Goliath is. That power that keeps mocking your prayer. That power that makes it feel like prayer is not working. Prayer will work for you today. Everybody get ready. Because this prayer point, you will hear news. Oh. You will hear what the Lord has done. You will say this loud and clear. Every Goliath! Get ready. Are you ready right now? Can I hear you say every Goliath loud and clear? Let's go. Can I hear you louder? Terrorize you, my love. Hear the prophecy now. Collide with the rock of ages. Die. Collide with what? Adam. Then we will enter the season of miracle galore. I want everybody, I want you to be mad in your spirit as you take the prayer right now. I want everything within you to say it. Are you ready right now? Every Goliath! Hey, your household enemies, they are running already. I'm telling you, you can't be praying these prayers and things will not happen. Can I hear you? Goliath! Can I hear you louder? Terrorize you, my love! with the rock of ages! Die! Oh, yeah! Get in there, Babush! Jesus! 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 Jesus, Jesus, aha, 
I like the way you are praying. The fire of prayer is on you now. My sister, shake it out. Shake it out. Shake it out. Aha. Shake it out. Aha. I like the way you are praying. Aha. Aha. Yes, 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 no more terror in your life. Amen. I will declare you are the holy God. The only God, I am, I am, oh, only God. I will declare, I will declare, you are the only God. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, the only God. I know, I will. stand out in the midst of God's people and testify that your Goliath is no more. I don't know if somebody is catching the prophecy. I prophesy that you will come out in the midst of God's people and you will testify that your Goliath is no more. In the name of Jesus. Let's, uh, let's have a seat quickly. Hallelujah. Seven lessons from the prophecy of the dry bone. Seven major lessons from the prophecy of the dry bone. How many of you have come across that song? Dry bone shall rise again. Dry bone shall rise. Dry bone shall rise again. Bone shall rise. Hey, Lord Jehovah is able to do all things. Oh, yeah, he's able. Dry bone shall rise. Ezekiel 37, we read from verse 1. Ezekiel 37, from verse 1. Very interesting passage. I'll just read some, then we go into those lessons, then we go into some prayers. And surely the Lord will do great things in our lives in Jesus' name. He said, The hand of the Lord was upon me. And carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. 
and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And look, they were very dry. Say something is very dry. That means that the death is in second grade. It has graduated. Not only dead, it has dried up. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, Prophesy upon the bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. So when the Lord is asking us to prophesy, you could see it in the Bible here. He said, prophesy. Five. He said, toss share the Lord God unto this bone. Behold, how we cast breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sins upon you, and will bring all flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you. Somebody say, breath in you. And ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And he went on like that because of our time. I know we have read it in our Bible reading. I now want to quickly go to those seven. You could see a situation that is dead, but something happened. I'm telling you, I don't know how dead. Your situation is it cannot be as dead as the driver you know life has gone out decay has taken place now it has what dried up but god brought it together i don't know what has been dead in your life for so long but i'm telling you by the word of prophecy god will assemble it back and it will come back to life what are the lessons that we can learn from this passage I was, I was shocked when the Lord, because really I just thought we will read it and we start prophesying, but the Lord said there are some lessons here that we can learn. And lesson number one that I want us to learn, because I know some of us are just shouting, I prophesy. <laughs> there, is, there is a prerequisite for you to prophesy. Number one lesson. He said, the deeper you walk with God, the bigger your testimony. The deeper. So, if you are walking with the Lord at a surface level, you will see what is called surface testimony. And you can see that in verse 1. Can we go to that verse 1? You can see that the man that he has to prophesy has entered a new realm. He said, the hand of the Lord is upon me. How many Christians can boast that God's hand is upon you? He has entered the level that that hand is there permanently. And he said, and the spirit and carried me out in the spirit. How many of us have that understand how deep Ezekiel has gone with the Lord? Spiritually is sound. Let's read through the Bible. A lot of people receive that surface miracle. And we never heard of them again. After the woman, woman with the issue of blood, did you hear of her again? Blind Bartimaeus, did you hear of him again? They were on the surface, but they were people like Apostle Paul that went deeper. He could not see. He regained his sight. After regaining his sight, was that the end? He went deeper. A lot of us, we are operating with the Lord on the surface level. We are not ready to go deeper. It is when you go deeper that you will prophesy and the prophecy will come to pass. It is when you go deeper that you will release a word and it will come to pass. Deeper walk with God. Knowing the Lord on a deeper level. When you see somebody wake up in the morning carrying the Bible, reading the Bible, what do you think the person is doing? The person is going, watch, deeper. 
I want to know this God more. You see people attending Bible study. Do you think they don't have work to do? They want to know him what? More. You see people fasting. And you are wondering, why are you fasting? Do you have a problem? He said, no, I'm not, I don't have a problem. I want my spirit man to be charged. I know a lot of people that fast. You fast because of problem. That's why sometimes everyone will not want the problem to go. Because he knows once the problem goes, you too, you are, you are living his presence. He said, where are you on the altar? He said, I have, I, have, I have things to do. But God wants us to have a deeper work. Ezekiel had a deeper work that the hand of God was upon him. Do you have a deeper? How deep? There are some testimonies that will not come until God sees that you are rooted in him. Rooted. I know there are some people right now that if a million should ring in their account today, they will not be in church next week. You ask where you are. <laughs> Vacation. So how many times do you take for Every two, two weeks. So. But the day they go for a checkup and the doctor say that there is something in the lungs, you see them back. Ah! Oh, no, wow! Surface Christians. So God is looking for people that are ready to take the work. Go deeper. Men and women that is ready to go deeper in the Lord. Men and women that are ready to go the other extra mile. That want to know him. Beyond the miracles. Paul would have just said, I've received my sight. Oh, I'll be telling people. But he went beyond that. He said that I may know him. A deeper relationship. Don't forget the first level. The deeper you walk, with God, the bigger your what? Your testimonies. If you are tired of all those surface testimonies, then walk with him deeper. Say, God, I want to know you. Get to that level that you said, I need you, God. Number two, listen. The spirit of the Lord gives you access to the spirit realm. The spirit of the Lord gives you what? Access to the spirit. Right? A lot of Christians don't have that spirit. That is why Jesus told the disciples, he said, Tarry, don't do anything. Stay there until the Holy Ghost come upon you. A lot of Christians, you look at them, it's time of prayer. That is when you will know those that are there. People that will do five minutes prayer, ah, it's too much. It's too much. It's too much. You see that the spirit is not there. But when the spirit is about you, it gives you access to revelation. A lot of destiny needs revelation. A lot of humans are here right now that the only thing that you need is a revelation that will take you to the next level. The next level will not come until you see. That was why when God went to Abraham, he said, what you see, what are you saying? The amount of the spirit of God in you determines what you see. So if you are here, spiritually you are dead. To the extent that if you go somewhere, they say pray for us. By the time you start the prayer, people, ah, which type of prayer is this? Oh, when it's time to pray at home, they said, oh, let us pray. You discover that it has time that you sleep off. Then the spirit is not in you. But when the spirit is in you, you have access to revelation. Access to deep things. If you are here right now and you can't see anything, somebody say, I dreamt, I can't receive. Then the spirit is not filled up in you. Can you see how majestic Ezekiel explained what he saw? He said, it took me. Took, I went out and I saw things. It is not only for prophets, it's for everybody. He said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit. He wants to pour his spirit on us. He wants us to go deeper. He wants us to see. Some of us, the, the end of your problem is just one revelation. God just takes you there, show you this, this, do this, do that, and you discover that what has held you for so long 
has just been dismantled with a revelation. I prophesy upon somebody here today. My God will give you a revelation. The revelation that will put an end to your struggle. In the name of Jesus. You see that people are not streaming amen the way they should. You don't understand the power of revelation. When revelation comes, there is promotion. There's some revelation that once you see, things start to work in for you. I'm praying for you that I prophesy into your life that the Lord will open your eyes to see deep revelation in the name of Jesus. Three, lesson. Prophecy is an effective weapon from the Lord to change your situation. It's an effective weapon from the Lord. Learn it. You understand? For the Lord to tell us to prophesy, learn it. It's an effect. If you go to that verse 4 of that scripture, you could see it's a weapon. God did not, you know, he says, he says ah, God said it. God said prophesy. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why some people don't understand. Say, ah, God can't do it. God is saying what? Prophesy. Can't God just say it? He said you should what? Prophesy. It's a weapon that can change your situation. A lot of us, instead of us going into prophecy, what we are busy doing is crying. Prophesy. That the Goliath you see today, you will see them no more. Prophesy. It is a powerful weapon in the end time. I want you to begin to prophesy into your future. That's why I see some parents. You keep complaining about your children. You do lead you about saying positive things to their life. When your child wakes up in the morning, lay your hands upon that child. Prophesy, you will be a superstar. Say that for three years and you will see the life of that child. But when they wake up, they see your big head. Like your father said, ah, look, at, look at your eye. Like the way the eye of your mother's grandmother. That's what you are saying. But when you wake up in the morning, and you, even if they are not there, just prophesy. Prophesy that my child will be a superstar. Prophesy. Women here, yeah, you can prophesy that my child will have access to the White House. It will happen. If a Kenyan man can enter the White House, you can enter the White House. So you prophesy. It's not even your own child. Prophesy that my lot will change. You can. It's a powerful weapon. Jesus, God kept telling him, prophesy. Say it. You say, ah, these are my own children. They have entered another level. Stop prophesying. Prophesy. You will be shocked that very soon they will carry the Bible more than you. Prophesy. Stop waking up. I don't like surrounding myself with negative people. Negative thoughts. They say, once I say that your words is negative, I just cut you off. I don't like negativity around me. Speak. The power of life and death lies where? In the tongue. The number four. Bread of God giveth life. There's some situation that we are right now that is dead. I want to teach you how to pray that Lord breathe upon this situation. That some of us, it's a marital life that is dead. We should learn how to pray that God should breathe upon your marriage. That was the beginning. There was no life in man. When God, he said, he breathed into what? His nostrils and life came. Is it your finance that is dead? We are going to pray today that the Lord should what? Breathe into your which area again is it your career that is dead? We prophesy that God should watch breathe into it. And the scripture said, When the bread came, flesh started locating their upon. Don't get worried. You know, some of us are worried that ah, how will all this thing now happen? This thing that has scattered for years. Don't worry by prophecy and by the bread of God, they will come together. 
How many nights did you pray that God should breathe on you? Is there any organ of your body that is not functioning well? Today, we will pray. Lord Jesus, breathe on my where? My head. Breathe on my neck. And life will be restored in the name of Jesus. Number five. Listen. That if you can follow divine instruction, God will do wonders in your life. A lot of Christians like God when we talk about testimony, but some of us don't like instructions. We don't like the type of Christianity that you like. The part of Christianity you like is, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. When it comes to thou shall not, then, ah, ah, this one is too hard. But for you to move forward in life, you must be a man and woman that likes instruction. I see a lot of people that, they don't, I've seen people that come to cancel, for counseling. What they want to do is already in their heart. I don't know why you do that. You know what you want to do is already in your heart. Though. You will not come. And the man of God will not tell you, this is what the Lord, and you will now go ahead to do what is in your heart. And when that problem, consequence comes, you will now come back to the same man of God and say, ah, you know, you are my daddy. My daddy, my daddy. Your baby is crying. But you did that. You, you know, as a man of God, sometimes you just want, ah, but I want this person. I want this person. A lot of people want to do, ah, you know, you know, it's the American style. Oh, I can do anything I want to do. I don't want anybody to control me. If you are not ready to yield to God's instruction, you could see that for them to even build this temple for him, he didn't allow them that go and build. You know me, I'm in heaven. He gave them instruction, the material they will use, the men they will use. For you to know that God is a what? A detailed God. Follows instruction. It's step by step. You can't do it your own way. You see, you do it your own way, you enter problem on your, your own. That is those days you say, God, where are you? And God says, oh, I am, I am that I am. I've been here. But you walked away. If you can follow instruction, divine instruction, God will do what? Wonders in your life. A lot of us, we are in the same position because we have refused to pass the exam of moving forward. I pray that today God will touch you in the name of Jesus. Let's see number six. When God is on your side, you cannot lose hope. You can't afford to what? Lose hope. Let's go to verse 11. When God is on your side, you cannot afford to what? Lose hope. He said, then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of what? Israel. Behold, they say our bones are what? Dried. Let me explain. They say that our own is what? Finished. So people have lost hope. They said everything cannot work. This is my life. It's a terrible life. I am not enjoying marriage. I cannot enjoy finance. I cannot enjoy what others are enjoying. They said, behold, they said our bones are what? Dried. And our hope is what? Lost. We are cut off for our what? Part. But did God call those bones back? I don't know how old you are, but you will still carry your own child. I don't know how, how long you have been in this situation. But my God will lead you to your promised land. When God is on your side, you cannot afford to lose hope. You cannot afford to write yourself off and say it is over. You cannot say, ah. Since I've started seeing people in, at 50 carrying baby, I know that God can do all things. You cannot. You cannot afford to compromise. He said, they said that they have what? That they are dried up. It is finished. I know the Lord is talking to somebody here today. You think you have tried everything. You cannot lose up. 
God will show up in your case. As you prophesy this afternoon, things that are scattered, things that are dried up, they will come back to life. In the name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, don't lose hope. God shows up. You could see that despite the fact that Abraham had delay. He had delay. Even when the angels were talking, they did not attack the angel. He said they laughed. They laughed. I know a lot of us that if somebody has prophesied when the thing has been so long, you just attack me. Are you your God? But they did not do that. They say laughed. And God named their son laughter. I don't know how long you have laughed. How long ago you recorded laughter in your home? Genuine laughter. But I prophesy that this whole week you will have reason to laugh. This whole week you will have reason to laugh. In the name of Jesus. The last lesson from this chapter is the one we can read from verse 12 to 14. 12 to 14. I want to speak to some people. The Lord brought you here for a purpose. A lot of people, when you see us pray, those people that laugh, people that get confused. Now, what is all this? What is all this? What is all this? He said, therefore, prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord, behold, oh my what? People. Is he talking that oh my enemies? God is saying, oh my what? Oh my people. I will what? Open your graves. It's possible to be alive and be dead. Can you see that? It's possible to be alive and yet in the spirit realm you are what? You are dead. He said, I will open your grave and cause you to come out of the graves and bring you into the land of what? Israel. The seventh lesson is that the ministry of deliverance is needed before you can fulfill your destiny. Deliverance. Can you see God saying that they should come out of their grave? A lot of people have been locked up. Just like I was saying on Thursday. So when you see us, oh, the pastor is saying, ah, come for prayer. Hey, come for prayer. Come for. Sometimes when we gather like that on Thursday and we see the whole place full. We put light. Flash light. Everything. At the time we count offering, it's, it's going to be like 300. So I don't know how 300 we, you understand, we take care. So we are not calling meeting because of money. We are not that type of church. We are calling meeting because we want your life to what? To change. So when you hear that, oh, we are having thoughts there, you are staying back. And most of the people that are saying that they are in the grave, you must come out. Learn to pray. Some of us people will look at you, you will talk. And they will put you in one standard. By the time they examine you, they discover that you are not there. They, you know, say, they don't respect me. People will not respect you if your life does not bring forth fruit. Even Jesus got to the fig tree. And he said that this is not fruitful. And he caused that fig tree. Your, your life must be what? Fruitful. That's why you see this man screaming here. I want a change in your life. We don't cause, we don't call those meetings because we need money. Because that 300 cannot even pay our instrumentalist. They can't even pay. You understand what I'm saying? So we know what we're saying. When you see us say, gather, come. It's now, it's Thursday. Right. So people will be sleeping. So people will be shop, uh, will be eating suya somewhere. With light beer. I say it's any game, it's not that. And you, when there is problem, they now come. Come. I see people that have come. That I will, the next time you come, we probably, I will be hitting your head like prayer city in Nigeria. You just say, Pah! It's the anointing. No, I'm just beating you. Because you have gone for so long. You know, when you go to a prayer city, you see the deliverance minister, they can give you, and the demon comes out. 
Maybe I'll be using that because when I see some people pray, it's time to pray. When problem now comes, he says it's stage three. You now see them all the time in church. They'll be calling on Tuesday evening. Is there no service? Eh? We will be coming every day. But when we are calling for prayers, we are praying. Some of you have been seeing us praying, and some of you are chewing gum. And you know, the, you, know you are from Ijebo Day. You are chewing gum because you are in America. A kitty man chewing gum, doing deliverance prayer. Ha! Ah, Say bye. You are chewing gum. You are looking at you. You are looking around. You are looking low. Oh, looky, looky, looky. You are quiet, but man. That you know that your forefathers, when they enter the water, by the time they come out, there will be no water on them. Spiritual towel has rubbed it. We are doing deliverance prayer. You are looking at us. Putting hand in your pocket. I'm waiting for you. So deliverance prayer cannot be neglected. The Lord brought you here for these prayers. You could see, say, prophet. He said, this prophecy I'm giving you is for my people. He said, I will open their grave. A lot of people are in the grave. You don't know. Some people that are dead, they took you there. They took your glory there. No wonder you find yourself anytime you see yourself trapped. The ministry of deliverance cannot be overlooked. So when you see us jumping, 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 we know that's the problem of the black race. We brought it from Africa, slave trade. We brought it. It's still affecting anywhere. That's why you see a neighborhood where we have a lot of black. There is the motion there. Is this thing we are talking about and we refuse? You come here, you are chewing gum. When I'm shouting, you think I like to shout? I want your life to change. That's why I'm shouting. There must be a change. Learn to pray. Some of you, you are seated there. You are singing one school day in a dream. You don't tell anybody. It's when they have finished your case, you now come. Some of you are there, you are eating every night. Every night to the extent that now you don't take dinner because you know they will bring it at night. And you have not done anything until they now say that it's a stage something. You now say, Father Lord, where are thou? He has been waiting for you since. You don't show up. Let's rise up and have it. I want us to prophesy. I know the Lord has spoken to somebody here today. Those of you that you are taking life as if it's just any hour. You are thinking. You are thinking. I say, oh, this is. Uh, and, uh, I, the, oh, you are, you are, I was telling somebody yesterday. I said, there is a gospel according to Bia Palo. Should I preach it to you? If you don't do evil to anybody, nobody will do you evil. Have you heard that doctrine before? It's a big lie. <laughs> the only reason why they will not touch you is if you are not aspiring high. If they see that your life is dead. But when you see somebody preaching that, have they preached it to you before? And you try to say, I have not done anybody anything. Nobody. They will finish you. If you have. Did, did Joseph do anything to his brethren? He only shared his what? History. Let's close our eyes. We want to come alive. We want things to happen. But if you are here, you have anything to search with the Lord. You have anything to search with the Lord. Just close your eyes and begin to talk to God. The Lord have mercy upon me. And if you are here, you want to give your life to Christ. Just raise up your right hand and say, Lord, I've heard the word of God today. I want a change. Just raise up your hand. The Lord has brought you here for a purpose. Yes, thank you, my sister. You want to surrender, just say yes. I'm here. I want to surrender and repeat this after me. Thank you, that brother. Raise it high. Let Jesus identify you. Raise it high. Raise it high. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Have mercy upon me. In the name of Jesus, do that which you alone can do. Come in as my Lord and Savior. I surrender to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want us to be ready right now. 
to allow the spirit of the Lord to come upon us. Two things. When the spirit comes, we will ask him to breathe on us. And when he breathes on us, then we now begin to what? Prophesy. You will prophesy everything you want. You prophesy to your finance. You prophesy to your womb. You speak, my womb, it's time to conceive. You speak to every area. Are you ready right now? But don't worry. Don't forget what I said. You have to go deeper in the Lord before some things can happen. Thank you, Jesus. Just That's... breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Your name. on that place, please. Everybody sing just pray.
right now I'm counting one two three let there be a break of life a break of revival one let trash shut the hush aha somebody has just been breathe on there you're back two pet two dollars let moon up a touch yeah mean a bush and number three breath of life aha Aha. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. Aha. Uh-huh. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say it. Lord, breathe on me. Aha. Uh-huh. Can I hear you say it loud and clear? Lord, oh Lord, breathe on me. I don't know the situation you are brought here. Your dry bone will rise again. Can I hear a scream in the house? Oh, Lord! Breathe on me! Raise up your two hands. I will say it seven more times. And we expect that wind to come in here. There will be revival. We will continue again on Thursday. Yes. Things must turn around. Are you ready right? I want somebody to show you loud. Oh Lord! Breathe on me! Can I hear you say one Shanda Babo Shata there. Oh Shata there. Let Maru Mata de Marush. Yamarobo Shan! Aha. Uh-huh. On every organ of the body. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Somebody has just been pulled 
Uh -huh. Into a deeper walk with the Lord there. Look at that. You can feel the Spirit of God coming over you. That is it. That is it. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's time to prophesy now. I want you to open your mouth right now. And I want your key word to say, I prophesy. Can I hear you say it louder now? And I don't know what you want to prophesy into. Maybe your finance. Your marriage. We will continue on Thursday. But I want you to just open your mouth and begin to prophesy. Upon your children. Upon any aspect of your life. Where you need a change. Are you ready? What is the key, the key statement there? What? I what? I prophesy. Are you ready right now? Are you ready now? I prophesy! I mean, I will pray, let my ministry receive enlargement. Can I hear you prophesy right now? Begin to prophesy right now. Aha, uh -huh. just prophesy. Prophesy again. Prophesy. Yes, I prophesy. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we prophesy. 